So Andrew Carnegie um, started making money with the Pennsylvania Railroad as the superintendent of a section around Harrisburg in western Pennsylvania. I guess it went out to Pittsburgh. He made money with them by brokering investments from London and France, Paris. And then later on got into the iron business, iron mills, and then he was one of the guys pioneering with other people in the steel business. He kept with science and developing science by hiring chemical engineers when other people thought they were not necessary back then. They were used to just doing things one way when it came to the uh, fluxing. But he realized that different iron ores had different chemical compositions and needed different fluxing. And he was the one that started getting ahead, leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else after a while. And the old guard was just stuck with one mentality, using one flux, no matter what kind of mineralization there was for the iron ore. This is a fantastic snow engine, stationary, naturally gas-fired pumping engine reciprocating. There's pistons on both sides that are pumped to the middle and then the compression force uh, moves the natural gas for storage. Well, it moves it to the next higher stage. This takes a large volume and compresses it into a smaller volume by making the pressure higher. And then there will be three more stages after this that would take it up to 600 psi and then they would pump it into the mountain where there was a permeable layer of rock, strata of rock, en encapsulated by impervious rock so it doesn't leak. So instead of having tanks, the permeable natural rock of the mountain was the storage tank. And then they would pump it up. Well, it was pumped in there. Then they would pipeline it out to Erie, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, Cleveland, Ohio for the factories and homes for natural gas in their stalls for furnaces and heaters. They used to have these little heaters in every room off of natural gas that you light with a match, which I used to do at my grandmom's house in northwest Pennsylvania. There was these blue flames and little circles and there'd be like five, seven, eight, twelve circles depending on the little furnace that's about sixteen inches wide, sixteen inches high and four to five inches deep. And you can really get burned on it if you're a little kid not paying attention and thinking fire and the blue color was really cool. So it, you know, it was open, there was a minor grill there. It was only good if uh, you bumped into it and burned your leg anyway from the hot iron grill. And you could catch your clothes on fire. So it was a rather dangerous affair. You know, you know, if you had any children, you always had to have them be in your sight. When you got older, you knew better. I used to love to light those things. Well, we're coming to the end of our 360 tour here of this massive 600 horsepower reciprocating pumping engine. There's a really nice little place is a phenomenal museum. That thing runs. It's not the one from the Beverly Hillbillies. This is a different manufacturer. One was a Buick. And the and this is whatever Beverly Hillbillies one was, this is a different manufacturer. One was a Chevy, one one's a Buick. And uh, you know there's your battery. Um, nice and secure of course according to modern OSHA standards and EPA. And, uh, those are solid rubber tires on a steel rim. If you're ever stuck, you can winch yourself out. And you got really great ventilation in these things. Uh, winter time, you know, you better wear a bunch of coats. There's no insulation on the walls of the cabin.
Here's another great little engine. And here's a, looks like, yeah, that's an electrical generator right there. And we're very closely hooked to a, a vertical hitting this engine. I could put my initials in that grease if I wanted to. If I wanted to. That looks like a German name. Let's see what it says here. Yeah, a bird. A work. Yeah, that's German. Work. Work. On, on, ein deutschen Maschine. With ein Patten, a diesel. You know, Mr. Diesel, that was his last name. He was a German guy. So this is sometime close to his lifetime. Ausberg, Werk Ausberg. See, they got these long compounded words. They're like four words all just glued together. This is from Nuremberg. Nuremberg LG. Ein, Einberg, and Und. That's Und. Und with a D. Und. Ja, Wort. Waschon, Waschonen Bog, Gesellschaft. Very simple. Like, Expialidocious. Remember that one? Supercalifragilistic Expialidocious was one word. That was oh, uh, Englisher. Aber say ya. And now I just hit Ukrainian. Um, oh, Mazin. Oh, Maschina. Maschinen. Maschinenberg. Gesellschaft. I guess it just means a machine shaft. Baringte. Baringte. I'm sure you German guys are going to be upset with me. I'm sorry. Or you're laughing at me, maybe. Machine and fabric. You know, I'm doing this on the fly. Through, through the. I didn't see this word in advance. I'm doing this right now. And I had German years ago in high school. We were in Germany. Augsburg. Augsburg. No, there's no S there. Oh yeah, there is Augs Augsburg. Augsburg. I think I have the accent right. Aus Augsburg. Augsburg. Cotton diesel. Schon. Bitter. You hear that big motor in the background? Oh, there's where it was. We got electrical tappets going on over here. This is exciting. Do not put your finger near that. There's electricity going through those things. Oh, I just turned the camera 90 degrees. I wonder what happens. Um, but anyway, this is to get a better view. I'm going to go right back. Sorry. Hold your stomach. All right, so I am only 12 inches away from this thing. I don't want it to arc at me. And I am, it's hot and humid here, so there's a lot of conductivity on my skin all the salts. This is so cool. This is one of the greatest power engine museums in the world. There's some beautiful Schonen ones in Deutschland. It sounds like some tap dancers in slow motion. I don't know if you can hear the electrical taps. Beautiful, uh, built-up white flange. This is before they had white flanges. It's a built-up column, like a beam, but it's vertical. Notice the rivets. And it's not even angle iron, it's plates. And, you know, there's a bit of the rust corrosion, and, and now it's all stabilized. Now, like right now, my head's tilted closer to the electrical thing. If I had long hair or dry, frizzy hair, 
it might catch. Would not be a good deal. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Must be careful. Live long and prosper. That's the thing we should always observe. Don't be in a rush. I'm, I'm a patient guy. So therefore, I got blessed with this guy giving me this private tour. I'm like one of the few exhibit, uh, tourists here today. And he heard that I came from California, so he's giving me quite the show. And there's another guy down the end that's a tourist. Yesterday was their big day here for the whole year. So there's still some hanger-ons from yesterday, but I didn't see a massive turnout here today. Maybe they were here yesterday. A beautiful vertical engine. Every one, there's so many different ones are uniquely designed, handcrafted. There's all these extra little curves and things and some of the earlier ones had beautiful uh, design paint painted on them, but simply the uh, the way the copper tubing is bent, the little transitions from one shape to another, there's graceful curves. Things are rounded. If you touch it, you're not going to get cut on the sharp edge when it's not moving. Yeah, and there's the uh, electrical generator. In 1903. Yeah, 1903, electrical was a big deal. It's already quite advanced. This is rather advanced for, you know, you thought that it was a well down the road, but they already were thinking a lot about electricity back then. Look at all this. I mean, this is engineering marvel. You, someone figured out you got to do all these things to get what you want. And a lot of it back then was hit and miss, uh, trial and error. And then there were certain principles to follow and certain knowledge to stay with. Fantastic. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. Can we do a dance song to this rhythm? I mean, I think there's a, a, you hear overtones of other secondary sounds and beats. So it's got a complicated combination by accompanying the big bass overall. Wouldn't that be so cool? I mean, this is a real, uh, a real dance beat, I think. You know, you could do like line dances with this. But like the African style, not, not the country western style. Remember the Watusi? Okay, here we go. Here's this little guy on rails, on wheels with handle grips. You pull it around, you know, you you put it you could maybe you could put a lawnmower blade on this thing. It's only about eight foot long. And this size engine is usually a five horse, maybe seven, but yeah, that's a, so many engines like this I've seen are five horse. Runs all day long on a quart of gasoline. All day long on one quart of gasoline. That's the cooling tower right there, that's your radiator. A well of water, and the and the water just jacket sits on top of the piston, and the heat transfers through the metal with no heat exchangers, just the metal to a, a pool of water that vaporizes out the top. Now you got to check that every once in a while so it doesn't run dry. And there's your uh, combustion side, and there's the spark plug. Sparky. Here we go. Wash bucket. And this is a fuel 
or oil tank. Some kind of petroleum bumper. have that African secondary drum sound. I mean, you can get in a real groove on this thing. Now, I have the copyright for this sound. You know, if you need to do some laundry,